customer wants to replace their 100 amp panel with a 200 amp panel. The new panel hasn't arrived here yet, but once it gets here, I'm gonna measure out the new panel onto the siding and we'll cut it out perfectly to size. And then we'll install the new panel and from the back side in the garage where there's drywall, we'll cut the drywall so we can land all the wires into the back of the new panel. Edison already removed the lock on the meter. So I can pull the meter and remove all the breakers and the wires from here so I can get this panel out. And then I'll install the new panel and reinstall all the new wires to the new panel. So on the back side of the panel is the garage. So this is where I'm gonna cut out my hole and remove all the wires so I can land them back into the new panel. So after cutting out the drywall, now I'm just gonna try to pry this out. There was already a patch here. So there's like wood behind here. Now after I put the new panel in, I'll be able to land all these wires in here nice. And I won't have to cut the siding too big. I gotta take this siding off the old panel. So I'm gonna remove these nails and then uh, we'll pull the panel out. Now I got the wood removed. Before I kill the power to the house, I'm gonna set the customer up with my Jackery battery backup so that they could have Wi-Fi and a couple outlets for various things that they might need to use. So now um, I can turn off all the breakers and remove all the wires and I'm gonna label each wire so I know uh, where to label it on the new panel. And I'm gonna remove these nails to take the panel out. I guess I could pull the meter now too. So even though I pulled the meter, these wires from the street are still live, so I need to tape them. So I'm gonna loosen the lug, pull the wire out, and then I'm gonna tape the crap out of it. And I'll do the same thing to the other power. So now I can work and I don't have to worry about live wires in my face. So now I'm removing all the wires individually so that I can label them with these numbers so that I know what to label the circuits in the new panel. Now that I got all my circuits removed and labeled, I'm gonna remove the neutrals and the grounds and then I can pull all the wires out from the back side. I already got the nails off, so this thing's ready to come out. So I got all my wires disconnected, so now I can go to the other side in the garage and pull them out of the top of the panel. They used that Romex as a strap. Now I got the circuits removed, now I can pull the pipes out. Now I got all the wires removed out of the top so I can pull the panel out from the other side. Because I have a number four Eufer ground in Park, they state that you don't need a ground rod if you have a number four Eufer ground. So I don't have to install a ground rod on this job. Panel removed. I removed the existing number 12 bonding wire and I replaced it with a number six from the gas to the hot water to the cold water. So I measured out the panel and now I'm gonna trace it on the siding and I can cut it out with the multi. So I got the new panel traced out and now I'm gonna cut the wood out with my multi. <laughs> I got the wood removed. 
I'm removing the paper, but I'm leaving it around the perimeter of the panel for waterproofing. Now I'm gonna remove the knockouts in the top of the panel where all my wires are gonna land. Because my panel's a lot higher, I'm gonna cut these conduits and extend them with flex to make it easier to land them in the top of the panel. Now that I got the KOs taken out of the panel, I can put the wires inside. Now that I got the panel pushed in, I can put these screws in. Installed the Romex connectors and I landed all the Romexes into the panel and now I'm gonna do my flexes for the three quarter and the inch and a half. On the panel side, I'm gonna strip all the insulation shorter and then I'll land all my neutrals and my grounds and then I can install the breakers. I separated my grounds from my neutrals and my powers. I'm gonna land all my grounds and then I'll land all my neutrals and then I can land all my circuits to the new breakers. I got all my grounds connected and now I separated my neutrals from my circuits so now I'll land my neutrals to the bus bar. I got all my my neutrals landed and now I can land my powers to the breakers. Now I got all my breakers installed. I just need to land the sub panel feed and install the 100 amp breaker. So I cut off the piece of conduit and I made a piece of flex and now I'm gonna put this sleeve of flex on and I'll push the wire into the panel. This is for my sub panel my 100 amp sub panel. Just like that. I got the lock nut installed and I finished installing the wires to the 100 amp breaker with the neutral and the bus bar. So I landed my neutral and now I'm gonna land my two powers. I got my first power landed. Now I'm gonna land the second one. After stripping my second power, now I can land it to the second terminal. Now when I put my meter in, the bus bar on the right side will be live and I can turn on all my breakers individually to power the house. Now I can push the meter on like that and then I'll turn on the main breaker. I'll turn on the sub panel and then I'll just turn on each breaker individually. Now he should have power to everything in the house. And I'll finish putting the covers on. This is what my conduit to flex ended up looking like. I forgot to put Norlox on the lugs, so I'm gonna kill the main, and I'm gonna loosen the screws, and then I'll pull the wire out, and I'll put Norlox on it, and then I'm gonna reinstall it back into the lug, and I'll retighten it, and this will stop the aluminum wire from expanding. Now I'm gonna remove these blanks. So I made my labels for the breakers, and now I'm putting the panel cover on with this screw. And then I can close the cover, and that's your end result.